We've come to sunny California to visit with a lady who contributed so much to the Chicago School of uh, Television and Radio, Fran Ellison. <laughs> We're glad you're here. Oh, I'm happy to be here today. Fran, now, we can't start off talking about your career without talking about Kukla, Fran, and Ollie. Well, I had a most joyous reunion with them and with Burr just in the past few weeks. I was so proud of Burr. He came out and did a series of uh, lectures and seminars at UCLA mm -hmm. and for about three weeks, really. And uh, on the final day, I joined him there, and uh, we showed an old kinescope at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> and uh, it was just so perfect. It was such fun. And CBS came out and covered it for their news, mm -hmm. and so did NBC, and that's entertainment. And uh, it was just a glorious finish to what had been a wonderful three weeks. And just before that, well, not just before, but in uh, uh, the last of October, I went to New York to join Burr because the uh, Museum of Broadcasting mm -hmm. had wanted to have some of our things to put in their archives. And we did the same sort of thing for a week. We just had a, about from 12.30 until 2 o'clock each afternoon. And people came and, and uh, even brought some memorabilia uh -huh. that Burr and I had forgotten <laughs> about. So uh, if I don't see them personally, Burr calls, and I very often... Uh, talk with uh, Kukla or Ollie or <laughs> Fletcher Rabbit or mm -hmm. Beulah Witch or whoever is handy at the time. <laughs> well, they're always handy. Did you ever think uh, back in 1947 when Junior Jamboree started on WBKB that 35 years later no. there would still be a real special interest? <laughs> no, in, in I certainly never did. But I'm just grateful for for all the time we spent together and for the many friends we made mm -hmm. through uh, the Kukla Pollens. How did you become an important third of that trio? Well, uh, Berth felt that it would be, because as you remember or know, mm -hmm. uh, it was an hour a day to begin with, and that's quite a stint to do although there were many little issues that we did use in there, which we did away with. Mm -hmm. We found that we didn't need them. And uh, so in talking with the people from uh, RCA who had come out from the East and the advertising agency, uh, Burr said if there were someone, he didn't need writers, but if there were someone to stand in front of the stage with whom he could talk, it might make it a bit easier for him. And it would also, he was wise enough to see, uh, bridge the gap between fantasy and reality. Mm -hmm. And um, I had met many of the people at the only television station there was at that time. And uh, those of us in Chicago who were in radio at that time mm -hmm. and uh, people from the theater who came through Chicago were asked from time to time to go over because the television station was under the command of the Navy at that time. It was a radar mm -hmm. school, really. And all we did was to go over and have our picture taken, really. <laughs> and uh, I, I met so many of the people there and liked them so much. And... And I stood where I was supposed to stand and spoke when I was supposed to speak. And so they remembered me with a rather kindly air. And, and when Burr said it would be great to have someone to work with, they suggested me. And he and I were talking about something totally different at that time. But he said, yes, that would be fine. So... Uh, Captain Eddie, who was the head of the station at that time, called me and asked me if I could come down the next day and talk to them. And I said, of course, I'd mm -hmm. be glad to. And uh, went down and we talked and decided that it would be worth a try. It might be fun. 
And that was Friday afternoon. We each went uh, our separate ways. And on Monday, I went down to the studio. And Burr and I went down and had coffee in the drugstore downstairs at 2 o'clock, went on the air at 4, and worked for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> no rehearsal? Nothing? No, just no. boom, you walked right in? Yes. And you were you were literally writing the show on the spot as that's, you went along. That's uh-huh. true. So it was a as it little. grew, as I told you, there were so many little things. We had a, a film from I think uh, National Geographic, something like that. And then we talked about the public library. We used to have a story lady come over, and she brought a host of little children with her. And they sat on the floor while she read, and they, not a kid heard a word because mm. they were looking all around, you know. <laughs> so we knew that wasn't going to work. So we just showed her the entire thing uh-huh. ourselves. And as um, as we grew, uh, of course we planned things, and, yes. and finally we were allowed to have music, which was great. And our greatest good fortune was being able to have the offices of Jack Fashionato, such a mm-hmm. fine musician, wonderful idea man, and fitted so beautifully in the context of the show. Mm-hmm. And uh, then we would talk about what we might do, you know, and so many of the things really grew out of actual experiences. Mm-hmm. Either I had had, Burr had had, maybe one of the girls in the office, and we just translated them into Kuklapalatanese, if there is such a thing, and that's the way it worked. Now, were they were they called the Kuklapalatan? Yes, Kuklapalatan players. players. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And you were the one in the middle. <laughs> I was the one in the middle. <laughs> did you ever really, did you mostly feel that these were real people? They were as... Uh-huh real to me as any good friends I I ever had. It never seemed strange for me to be speaking with them. Mm-hmm. They all made such good sense. And uh, I, I looked forward to, uh, to each day, you know. And we had not been together for it was almost uh, a year. Uh, Miss Zachary, who was our producer, uh, was killed in an airplane crash, and and she was such an important uh, part of our group. Burr felt he just didn't want to do anything for a while, nor did he. And finally, we were asked to come into New York and substitute for uh, a program at NBC during a vacation period there. And uh, we were to start the Monday after Easter. Well, I had... Easter luncheon with with Burr. We had to have some pictures made, but I didn't look at Kukla or Ollie when we had the pictures because I didn't want to. I knew they weren't going to speak to me, and I I didn't (laughs) want to see them that way. And the next morning when I arrived, I went into makeup, and when I came out, Burr was uh, already in the studio, and uh, Ollie was up on stage, and as I came in the door, he said, Oh, Francis! <laughs> and I knew that everything was all right, and it had not been almost two years that we'd been apart. It was just like last uh-huh. week. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, now Kukla, Fran, and Ali continued for um, many years, uh, and you said it was... Uh, uh, we worked consecutively uh, on a regular basis for ten years. Yeah. Then we were uh, off for, uh, well, a little less than, than two years. Then we did... Uh, guest appearances Mm -hmm. and then I think the next thing we did was um, a little series that we did for Miles Laboratories and then we did um, uh, started to do the children's CBS Children's Film Festival Mm -hmm. and we were hosts on that for nine years and uh, then we did a series for uh, public broadcasting Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, there was a series that ran on the NBC-owned and operated mm-hmm. stations. That was within the last couple of years. Now, yes, right? not too long ago. I know you did a Christmas. Uh, oh, then then special. we did then we did a Christmas special, uh, and we did an Easter special mm-hmm. and a Halloween uh-huh. uh, special. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, how can you can't go wrong with Christmas and with Easter with the <laughs> Fletcher Rabbit and the Halloween well, I know. With the old I, witch? You know, it was great. <laughs> and I thought the title of the Christmas show, Tis the Season to be Ollie, yeah. <laughs> was a stroke of genius. Well that has now see by, by doing some of those specials like that, you you almost guarantee you know, perpetuity here mm-hmm. because they're, they all the networks always want to run the, uh, the special mm-hmm. programs at holiday time and all that. So, well, and that's great for us. But is there anything new in the works for I KFO? couldn't say about that. Um, Burr's going to be quite busy right from now on. He has written a charming children's book, although. Uh, the manner in which it is written would be equally entrancing to any adult, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's called The Dragon Who Lived Downstairs. uh And uh, so he's going to make some appearances uh, relative to that because it it has just come out this month. And there have been some other things that uh, we're thinking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll just see what happens. Oh, good. Well, we talked... Now about the beginning of your TV career, which really was with Kukla Fran oh, yes. and Ali. Mm-hmm. But what about your radio career? How, well, you know, I began in, in radio um, out in Iowa mm-hmm. at a station there as a vocalist. And I went to Chicago to NBC as a vocalist as well. And then uh, I worked also in, in uh, Chicago at CBS. But my first assignment was at, at NBC was uh, with the Breakfast Club. At that time, there were two divisions of the network. Mm-hmm. The Breakfast the Club and the was blue. the one. Mm-hmm. And what a fortunate thing I, I found myself to be in, to be uh, with Don McNeil on, on Breakfast Club. And all the people associated with, with that show were as closely knit a family as were all the people who surrounded mm-hmm. KFO. I just I count myself so very lucky to have had two wonderful men whom I regard as my dearest friends, Burr and uh, Don McNeil. Mm-hmm. Well, you were Aunt Fanny. I was Aunt Fanny. Fanny. Well, I went there just as a singer, but uh-huh. out in Iowa I had done this character and Breakfast Club was such a revealing show. They wanted to know what you ate for breakfast, you know. <laughs> so they delved deeply into one's past and found, Don found that I had done the character of Aunt Fanny. So I brought her to life there. And she outlasted me. <laughs> <laughs> How do you mean that? I haven't told her yet. She's out of work, poor soul. I don't want her to know. <laughs> well, maybe you can do a spot. <laughs> well, Aunt Fanny, of course, had... Uh, I remember the theme song that brought you on was uh, Only a Bird in a Gilded Cage. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you had a lot of fun. The audience really loved Aunt Fanny. Well, I hope they did, and oh, I think sure. they did. You talked a lot about all your, oh, your friends. Oh, yes, we had such fun. And I, of course, could say things to uh, to Don, which I wouldn't have said as myself, you know. I remember when he first got bifocals and he was terribly conscious about them because he <laughs> didn't it wasn't easy to become adjusted to mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. so I said uh, Mr. McNeil I said I, I wish you hadn't went to work and uh, bought them uh, binoculars because <laughs> I said, they're deceiving I said you will want to shake hands with somebody and he'll be across the street. <laughs> but, and of course, the guys in the band would all fall out. He, he used to play a clarinet, and he had a pretty tone, but it, uh, it had everything had to be kind of slow, you know. <laughs> I'd say, Mr. McNeil, I, I wish you'd... Uh, you'd come and uh, join Pearl's little compote that she has. <laughs> I said... You won't have to play that flow gently, sweet after that. I said you can, really, you can really just bang it out, <laughs> and the fellows in the band would just die. <laughs> and I talk, I had a letter from one of them the other day, and I hear from Eddie Ballantyne and, and Franny Ballantyne, dear wonderful friends. Eddie was our conductor mm-hmm. for years, and Cliff and Eileen Peterson, whom I adore, and uh, it's. It's so wonderful to have such 
lasting friendships, you know, and really have them so deeply rooted and have them be as precious as they are. I've, I've been a very fortunate lady. Well, that's, be, that's so much of the closeness of radio, and especially in the Chicago mm -hmm. days, I think there was a real uh, camaraderie amongst the Well, there performers. certainly yeah. was in that show. Did you it, work with, uh, uh, were you on the uh, Breakfast Club at the time Jim and Marion Jordan were on there? They, no, they, they preceded me. Uh -huh. Jim Jordan is one of my dearest mm -hmm. friends. Now, he's mm -hmm. married to my, one of my closest friends, Gretchen. She was Gretchen Stewart. And... Uh, they were to have been over here last night, and Gretchen has a miserable cold mm. and couldn't come. Yeah. But uh, Jim is is wonderful. He uh, sometimes finds it a little difficult to get around, but he he always looks as though he just jumped out of a bandbox. Yeah, he just looked. got a star in the uh, yes, uh, that real long mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> You you. I have a note that says that you worked with Ransom Sherman for a while. Oh, Ransom you? called me just last night. Oh, really? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon. He's <coughs> living right right outside of uh, Las Vegas. Uh -huh. Looks wonderful. Just great. He contributed a lot to Chicago radio oh, and the TV of course as he well. Did. Yes, you, you did yes. have a show... Uh, I think it was called Smile Parade, is that right? Yes, that was a radio show. Mm -hmm. I did radio. that with him, sponsored by Swift. What was Smile Parade? Uh, just a musical variety mm -hmm. show with the you script. You would sing and uh, mm -hmm. he would do mm -hmm. the jokes, huh? Well, I worked with him. I was, <laughs> it was always such fun to work with him. Pat Barrett was known as Uncle Ezra. I adored and him. And you did some things with yes. him, too, didn't mm -hmm. you? Mm -hmm. Uncle Ezra. Pat and Nora Barrett, his wife. Wonderful people. Just wonderful. I think for Swift and Company as well, and this was probably even as you were beginning the Kukla, Fran, and Ollie thing, you were on a, a Saturday morning situation comedy called Meet the Meeks. And oh, that was at CBS. CBS. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That was before. That was in the... Just before the, 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 the still KFL. doing radio. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, I did that. That was fun. Now, when The Breakfast Club went to television... It was really not a breakfast club so much. As well, yeah, it was a simulcast. We did mm -hmm. it was the same pattern mm -hmm. exactly. But at that time, if you will remember, we were like an island. At that time, ABC did not have as many stations as did either NBC uh -huh. or CBS, and in some areas. The station would open up for us and then go black for an hour. Now, if you don't have something to precede you and something to follow, yeah. you are really on an island and it's yeah. just not going to yeah. work. And it didn't. And when the it finally came to the down to the point where it no longer made financial sense to spend that amount of money and yet not have the coverage that other stations mm -hmm. were having for what, what would have been the same amount yeah. of money. Mm -hmm. And the mail came in in bags, you know, because people didn't want to see the show go. Well, it did, and uh, that's that. But I think m many times today that it really was such a healthy uh, show, I think there is a place for it. It's, I don't think Don would want to do it uh, mm -hmm. again. I'm sure he wouldn't. But there is a place for such a show, I well, think. Well, I think so, too. Everything is so heavily formatted and oh, all that yes. stuff, heavily scripted and departmentalized so much in the morning. But I think it would be refreshing to have a well, I think uh, it kind would. of an informal audience participation show. Maybe it wouldn't get all the... the, the uh, precise demographics that they look for today, but I think that that's the kind of a natural well. type of a show that that should be on, and I think Ann Fanny should be on it. <laughs> Kukla and Ollie ought to well, sneak in once in a while. Pardon. I'm doing something <clears throat> right now which I just enjoy mm -hmm. more than I can almost tell you. About, oh, it was just a year ago before last Christmas, uh, a lady called me from KHJ and said, we'd like very much to have you come over and talk to us about doing a pilot. So I said, well, Miss Welling, what kind of a show is it? 
And she said, well, it's beamed towards senior citizens. And I said, well, heaven knows I qualified, but <laughs> you could not have contacted anyone who knows less about the subject uh -huh. than I do. And she said, well, please come and talk to us anyway. So I did. And I met the gentleman that day with whom I do the show. He, his name is Tony Lamb, and he is a retired electrical engineer. He has a string of patents that would reach from here to Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's 80 years old. He's about six feet two and is as straight as an arrow and has a shock of silvery hair and a mm -hmm. full silver beard. And he, since coming out here 13 years ago, has devoted every ounce of his time, every bit of his energy, to helping senior citizens. He's one of seven senior senators. Now, they are elected by the populace. It's mm -hmm. not an appointed thing at all. Although he is on boards appointed by the governor, uh, he's been on boards having to do with the presidential authority. And these, this group of men go up to Sacramento twice a year to the legislature there and present to them any grievances they have, anything they want changed, and suggestions for things they would like to have enacted. Mm -hmm. There isn't a minute of his day that isn't involved in helping out someone who has a problem because you know how many problems there are. Well, I have learned so much and have enjoyed the, the work so greatly, and I've met so many young people who are involved in one way or another with a program that either has to do with problems that beset senior citizens or uh, they are working in some mm -hmm. way to get them involved in doing something. It's really just it's been a wonderfully uplifting thing for me to have done. Yeah. And How often is the show on? Well, it's on uh, three times uh, a week. It's mm -hmm. shown at an unholy hour, I thought, uh, Thursday at 6 o'clock in the morning, uh, Friday at 6.30, uh, Sunday at 6.30, I think mm -hmm. it is. And that's when many senior citizens uh, watch. They get up early. But I, yeah. not only they, I run into people and say, Fran, I watch the show and I'm interested in it. We've had letters from doctors who feel that they can offer suggestions mm -hmm. and help us in some way, and they've been on the show. Now, there are three different shows? They're sa the same show. The show runs like three, just, times. Uh, three times. Mm -hmm. That's still a good schedule for you, isn't it? Uh, well, you know, once a week you've got a... I, we tape every other week, and then mm -hmm. we do two shows mm -hmm. uh, back to back, mm -hmm. and uh, I just love it. And it deals all locally with local problems? Local well, yes, because it, it, it is just a, a local show, mm -hmm. but there are so many shows it's called prime time mm -hmm. now Arlene Francis in New York and I worked on that show with her uh, it's called the prime of your life but they deal more particularly with people from the arts who are still in actively involved see, yeah. in something or other whereas ours is um, a more informative uh, mm -hmm. show because it takes the problems that that senior citizens have or makes them aware of something which is available to them that they might not know mm -hmm. about, you know, otherwise. Well, gee, it's nice then to be in front of the cameras yet. Uh, yes, so, uh, Bird did a show with me while he was oh, out good. here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We came over. That must uh, have been a lot of fun. It to, was, uh, it was. Well, I want to thank you very much for having us uh, here in your home in Van Nuys, oh, California. I'm to so chat glad you bit. came over. And bring with us uh, regards and uh, hello from all of your fans in the Chicago oh, area. Be sure to give my dearest love to Ted Weber. I sure will. And thank you very much, Fran. You're so welcome. And please have a lovely time as long as you're here. Uh, we sure will and are. Good. Thank you.